So how are you doing? Great. You are doing great. Yeah, so we welcome you to uh, another segment of Capsule Talk Show. So with me in the studio today is uh, our big brother here, uh, Father Frank Benya. So he's called Father Frank Benya. So Father, you're welcome. Thank you. Oh yeah, so we are pleased to have you on our studio with our, on our channel today. Okay, so first of all, uh, I'll allow him to introduce himself so that uh, you get to know him uh, better, further to the audience. They are all ears listening to you. Uh, thank you, my brother. Thank you for having me on this show. And there is nothing much about me to know than he has already done by introducing, by calling my name. I am Reverend Father Frank Benya Paul from the Diocese of Ho, Ghana, on a Fide Dono mission to Haboroni Diocese. And I currently stay at Ramo to a St. Conrad's Parish. So that is all about me for now. Right, thank you very much. Uh, so you know he's from my diocese, you know, so we are from the same diocese. I'm also from the Cali Diocese of Ho, uh, Ghana. So we are laboring in the vineyard of the Lord together and we are on a mission here in Botswana. And uh, so you are welcome. Yeah. Yeah, so far so good. How do you see Botswana and uh, <laughs> how are you adjusting to the weather? I would say so far so good. Yeah, because I've been here for like 10 months now and still counting and I would say I've had a wonderful time staying here in Botswana and within this period I had a bit of taste of some various towns like Haboroni, Sarowe, Francis Town and now to Ramu Otwa. and interacting with people has been so interesting. Knowing their culture, knowing their ways of life, their political system, everything seems to be good. Though every country, every every society has its own ups and downs, but definitely I will say it is actually good to be here. Thank you very much. And also, you know, in Ghana, we don't have the system of uh, this whole thing of winter and summer. And then all of a sudden you come Definitely. here and uh, uh, you have to experience winter for the first time. How, how is it feel like? <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that one, it, is, it wasn't that easy. The cold was very extreme. Of course, back in Ghana, we also experienced a season called uh, the dry season, which is also a cold period. But here, yeah, the winter seems ravaging. Very, very extreme. And here, one thing I experience is, since the weather here goes more extreme than as compared to Ghana. If it is hot, it is hot. Extremely hot. Extremely hot. And if it is cold, it is extremely cold. <laughs> exactly. So that is how it is. But it, it is a nice moment. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So that is that is it. Um, that is the extremes when it comes to Botswana. Uh, when it's cold, it's cold. Extremely cold. When it's hot, it's extremely hot. Uh, sometimes when you enter the car with the AC, you yeah, think that yeah. you don't even have AC in the car. Yeah. yeah. Sure. So so how is it like? Um, you working in Ghana for some time, and all of a sudden the bishop asks you that, okay, Father Frank, I would like you to go to Botswana for a mission to help the church there. Uh, by we know the church by its very nature is missionary, yeah. but you know very well that you are a diocesan priest, and all of a sudden the bishop is like, Father, you know what? I would like you to go to Botswana to help the people of Botswana, the the, the, the mission there. To you know, how how is the feeling like the first day hearing it? Well, working with the people of Ghana was I was very zealous about my ministry actually, most especially when it comes to the youth, very much interested in them. So when I was called to the office, the first question he asked is, what is my ministry? And I told him, oh, Bishop, I told you that I love the youth. So the youth ministry is my, my interest. He said, oh, okay, how about mission? I said, oh, okay, a priest must be dynamic. So a priest can be missionary. Every priest has a gift. So there is no problem. And I asked inquisitively if I am safe. There he opened up and said, oh, 
I want you to go to Haboroni upon the request of the Bishop Frank Nobuatsa. So I want you to go there. And I was like, wow. I was kind of surprised because it is something I wasn't expecting. I did. So all this while I was just thinking that, oh, he will have to transfer me to another parish in the diocese. So when he said it, I was kind of, wow. So, so how many years? And he said, five. I said, oh, okay. If it is the will of God, let it be done. So that is all. Yeah, so that, that, that is it. Even myself, when the bishop told me to come to Botswana, I went uh, to um, Father Eric Mausi. Yeah. He invited me to his parish to help uh, to listen to confession, prepare the children for um, confirmation. So I went to the parish there, and um, after everything, the bishop came in the evening. So the following day will be the program. So the bishop was there. So the bishop was like, okay, Richard, when you are done, or you are going to your car, just let me know so that I'll escort you to your car. <laughs> so I was like, come on now, you escort me to my car for what? <laughs> so I was like, okay, my lord. So after that, when I was going, then I told him, okay, I'm done now, I'm going home. And he said, okay, let's go. Because you know, from Fodome to Likbe, it's not all that far. Yeah. So I was going, then he said, okay, let's go. So we were going, he said, oh, do you have a driving license? I said, yes. And he said, okay, okay, um, we de uh, I want to tell you this, we decided that uh, uh, you should go, I mean, go to Botswana. Uh, you have one brother, Father Foster there, but other brothers are home, so we want someone to, to represent us there. So I was like, come on, I'm young, you know? So normally you, our brothers who come here, they are old and with experience. So he said, no, we trust you. It's a decision from the consultants that uh, uh, we see what you do and all of that. So just go and also impacts and then it helps you also to grow and have new experience, you know, from different perspectives. So I was like, okay. So, but then I was like, come on, Botswana. And then that, but then I didn't know that, There's that expression on my face. <laughs> so I was like, okay, Botswana, Botswana. Where, where is Botswana? Exactly so I was what Googling. I did also. I <laughs> so had I was, to go and Google. Exactly. So I was yeah. Googling to see where Botswana is located and all of that. And, um, and so I went home, driving home. It was like a long <laughs> journey from there to, Sorry. yeah. So when I got home, I, I Google again, check, ah, this is Botswana. Okay, went to the YouTube, check Botswana. So after that, okay. Um, so it wasn't easy for me also. And um, I had to consult the, my, I told my parish priest who was angry. He said, ah, Botswana, no, why is it taking you away? You know? So I told my spiritual director, and because he said I should give him a reply later on, yeah. you know. So because then we were preparing for your ordination <laughs> at our parish. So by then we were preparing for the ordination at my parish. But then, so after that, and uh, he, has, he asked me, so how far the response? And I told him, okay, he said, okay, let me go home. And then you call me and anytime you let me know. So I called him and told him, okay, upon reflection, upon everything, uh, uh, consulting my spiritual director and I'm, I'm ready to go. So he said, okay, thank you very much for um, accepting to help us there, to represent us in Botswana. So basically, it wasn't easy for me, you know, it was, uh, I know that the, we are taught in the seminary that the church by its very nature is missionary and that the, you can be sent or a priest could be sent to anywhere in part of the world but it was so soon because like come on let me enjoy my home <laughs> my diocese so the same feeling you you had i think the same feeling we also had you know anyway. one one funny thing was like when he told me and i said okay bishop why do you think i am the one qualified to go to Botswana of course just like you said there are other people who who are there and he said okay based on the assessment that he gave he saw that I am one person who really loves going out to the people visiting them at homes and the zeal that he saw in me was like it is no longer common among priests so based on that fact he wants me to go and do this missionary work somewhere yeah. that it is needed. 
Yeah, because we know, you know, Botswana is a, a young church growing yes. and it needs a, a lot of a, some kind of a zealous priest who will be able to uh, be close to the people, as the people say, that the shepherd should shepherd smell like the sheep. Yeah. So, and uh, that is it. Okay, so, so telling your parents after that, are you going to tell your parents about this thing? How, how was the feeling? How did they take it? Well, telling them, of course, they understood my call. Right from the day one of my going to the seminary, in actual fact, kudos to them. They have been very, very supportive. In actual fact, if not for them being my supportive pillar, I wouldn't have come this far. So I know the grace is also working. So kudos to our mother and all mothers who supported the mission yeah. of their priest or their sons to become priests priest, yeah. in the Catholic Church. And kudos so, to all of you, all parents of a, a Catholic priest out there. Kudos. So yeah. on my this day, when I went home to tell them, they said, oh, OK. Now, the bishop sees you qualified to go somewhere. So what can they say? The only thing they can do is to pray for me and after giving me their advice and all that. And of course, it's my people from Agathe who were also very supportive. I cannot leave them alone, so I had to celebrate the farewell mass with them and it, they were happy. Though I didn't tell them specifically where I was going. I only told them that oh, I'm traveling. So they prayed for me, they supported me the way they can. And here I am in Botswana almost a year now. It's good so far, so good. Okay, so your parents took it in good faith? Took it in good faith because they understand the call. So that is it. So that is uh, something interesting. So that's it. So that's it. So some of us also, they did take it well, but uh, with time, it has to sink in and you yeah, have to, sure. yeah. So, and then preparing, coming to Botswana and then adapting to the food, the culture and everything. I would say a very big thank you to you and Father Foster who were there during the preparation stage to come here. The visa, the passport and the visa and the air tickets, arrival, you coming to pick us up and all that. If not for you, I don't know how it would have been. Because seriously speaking, it is good to have brothers around. So with you, the support from the Church of the Catholic Diocese of Ho and other stakeholders, it was smooth. Mm. That is the life of a missionary. That is a, a missionary lifestyle. So you must be prepared always at all time. There's one time, um, one of our formators, Reverend Father Setriaco Giraldo, once says, see, the work we are preparing for is like being in a military camp. For him, he always says this, for him, his bag is always prepared. As soon as the bishop says come, he is on his way. So it's like you must always be ready. You must always be prepared. You must always be accommodative to any change that comes and you must easily adapt to situations when we came and we began the first two weeks and i began eating the setswana food i even thought i couldn't adapt early but even the priests were saying no i was quick to adapt to their way of life the way because i thought i can't eat their kind of food but I was able to quickly adapt. That is a missionary spirit. So what, you, what, 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 what is the food that you love, the, the local food that you love oh, most? The, a nicely prepared palechi mm -hmm. with uh, morojo mm -hmm. and then uh, pojobe. Mm -hmm. Of course, as for the homo and the uh, mm -hmm. coco, it's, it's always there, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So I really enjoy their delicacies. Yeah. So the apology is like a play in a local yeah. or banku. Yeah. Uh, normally, when you come in, you quickly adjust to that. Yeah. You relate to yeah. that because it's like a play or or banku. So you'll be able to quickly adjust. Yeah. And um, in terms of the language, so how how was it? Because you were out to learn the language so to yes. for some time. We travel not to escape life, but for life not to escape us.
when we arrived initially like they've done to you you went to people's house interact with them and all that but when we came they decided to do it first with uh, a formal way of education because of the even the covid the, yes the covid because also of the yeah, COVID yeah, also. yeah yeah so a teacher was employed and we had to do a classroom kind of lectures so the teacher was very helpful helping us to understand the grammar the morphologies and all that uh -huh. so that helped us to also pick the fundamentals of the language so after that after three months we went to Saroe to do the community experience interacting with the people celebrating mass and all that so it was actually at Saroe that i would say i become very conversant with the language some technical issues as far as yeah, language concerned yeah though now i can't say i can speak fluently but you now you have the basics yeah but at least I can celebrate the mass now in their language. Some of their songs I can sing. And then at least basic yeah. uh, conversations I can. Okay, that's very good. And also with the, with, the, with the family experience, stay with the family. What are some of the few things that you have, you have mm. learned from that? I had the opportunity to stay, to go to Topisi, a suburb of uh, Palape area district. Yeah. And I stayed there with the family mrs bob and the family so i had a lot of interactions with the community members i had to visit the cozy and the, uh, the kotla cozy is the chief huh? yeah the cozy is the chief yeah so i had to go to the kotla interact with them go to the market interact with the market women at least if i want to buy something what do i say if i want to take a change how do i say it? and all that so it is from there that i pick certain things yeah so it was very interactive actually yeah all right so 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 that is that is uh, my brother's experience as far as staying with the family is concerned and also staying with the family one thing i also learned uh, with such wonderful program is the fact that um, you're able to understand your culture yes. and um, technicalities basic 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 things you are able yeah. to get it because you are going to as it were minister to the people uh coming from a, a particular background so if you are going to minister to the people it's good that you stay with them yeah, yeah. and and understand yeah, yeah the psychology why they do what they do yeah. so stay with the family helped uh, me personally to be able to get into why they do what they do yeah. coming from ghana and uh, botswana there are some cultural differences so you learn a lot you learn a lot and you to help you to understand them especially when you go to the village setting yeah. it's, it's, it's wonderful that, that, that it was actually at to pc that i really tasted the real morocco mm -hmm. the way it is prepared and i was told that the way it's like in haboroni people usually do it in a modernized way mm -hmm. but in Topisi, you do the real yeah, traditional yeah. moroho. Yes. Yeah. So it is kind of abeleko wana amataji ya watu inye. Aha. So that's how it is. Aha. Uh -huh. So basically, that is it. That is the experience so far. Those watching us, if they ask you, Father, you are coming from Ghana. What should we expect from you as someone coming from Ghana? What are you coming to add? What is your passion? What, what, what should they expect from you? Okay, in the education sector, there is something we call from the known to the unknown. When you want to teach, you begin from the known to the unknown. I can't begin from the abstract. So I can't start straightforward with things from Ghana. So I need to know what they already know in their own cultural setting. Then I build up from there. And then with the idea from Ghana, I kind of... Do have a synergy. Yes. So that is how it's going to be working now. So basically you are telling us that now you are trying to study their culture, exactly. go deep into it. Then you see, oh, this is what they lack. 
Yes. I, 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 it, because every, we all lack something in our cultures and in our, where we find our environment. So from there, you are able to also bring on board and say that, okay, I think I can explore this for the good of this. So I'll take up this challenge and I'll solve it in my own way. Exactly. So that's a very wonderful approach. And um, we, we, we wish you all the best as you, 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 you prepare for the ministry year. We wish you all the best. What will be your message to the people watching us there today? Especially seminarians. Now that you are here, without knowing that you will be on a mission, what will be your message to seminarians who are being formed? Fine. The word mission from Missio is to send. And to send simply means somebody giving you an assignment to do, to go on an errand, to do something. So God is calling you or has called you into formation to send you out. So the, all you should know is I am being prepared to be sent out. Where or how shouldn't be the issue now? For now, you prepare yourself. Very soon we are going to have a mission Sunday and it is proper you understand really what mission means. If you understand the word mission from Missio, I don't think you will have any challenge when the bishop says, go to this place. You understand where the word is coming from. So my advice to my dear brothers in the formation is, just prepare yourself. Descend your vocation. Come to terms with the fact that you have been called, you have been chosen, you have been justified to be sent out on a mission. And the mission is the salvation of souls, no matter where. Even if you are needed to at Gaba, that there are souls over there who need to be saved. So it doesn't matter where. All right. Thank you very much. So that's what Father is saying. So prepare yourself, prepare your mind, and be ready to take up this universal call of mission because we are sent into the world. As Jesus said, that's the command, go into the world and make disciples of all nations. The church exists to evangelize, and then the church by its very nature is missionary. So as a seminarian, you are a priest or whatever, you are preparing to go to the seminary, just know that uh, if I become a priest, I'm not limited to only my diocese. Uh, could be sent you know to any part of the world um, to preach or bring salvation as to far all as the salvation bring. of soul is concerned yes so thank you very much father we are happy to have you here today thank and uh, yes and we wish you all the best thank have you. a wonderful day thank you and yeah. have a wonderful one too exactly